and welcome back to To Read or Not To Read. Now, it wouldn't matter if you had a Netflix account or not, but it would have been hard to miss the release of Bridgerton this past December. The series is based off the Regency era inspired book series of the same name by Julia Quinn. And with 82 million streams and counting, Netflix counts it as one of the most popular shows ever in its history. And it's really not a surprise. Regency inspired romances have remained one of the most popular subgenres of the romance genre. And original works published during the Regency era itself have remained not only in print, but in popular culture for almost 200 years. It's a decadent period full of lavish parties, high society, and elaborate costumes. It makes for great reading and for great watching. So while we're patiently, patiently, patiently waiting for the next season to be released, I've got some great nonfiction reads to add to your reading or your watching experience. So which real life figures would have made it into the fictional Lady Whistledown society papers? Plenty of people mentioned in Venetia Murray's An Elegant Madness would have made it into the gossip papers of the time. And she goes into good detail on all the different scandals and gossip of the day, but also the manners, the dress, even the actual cost of daily life in this period. I definitely would recommend this book if you're a fan of Regency inspired romances or just historical novels in general. Next is Jane Austen, The Secret Radical by Helena Kelly. Plenty has been written about Austen's life, but we actually don't know quite as much about her as we think we do. And Kelly's really quick to point that out. And the purpose of her book is really to examine Austen's life through her work. And I would absolutely recommend this for anyone who's a fan of Austen because I think it adds a lot to your next reread or rewatch of any of her works. My next pick is Mary Shelley by Miranda Seymour. Uh, it's really interesting to recommend this right after I recommend a book about Jane Austen because Mary Shelley's most famous work was only published five years after Pride and Prejudice was published in 1813. And as much as we associate the Regency period more with Austen, Mary Shelley's work is just as reflective of what was going on in that age. The Regency period was a brief period, it was usually 1811 to 1822, um, but this is a, a period of enormous change in society, increased urbanization, great technological advances like uh, the advent of gaslight and the beginning of steam-powered travel, um, and also great advances in scientific understanding. And Seymour's book really does pull on all of those different in sources of inspiration that led to Mary Shelley creating Frankenstein. I definitely would recommend this if you're a fan of gothic novels, if you're a fan of Regency inspired era novels. I, I really think you would enjoy this book quite a lot. I have a couple of quick other additional picks to kind of include if you want to do a little bit more reading. I would recommend London Sinful Secret by Dan Cruikshank. Um, this is definitely a pretty, pretty in-depth uh, book on the kind of uh, darker side of society in this period. So if you're interested in that, this is, might be a good book for you. Another one would be Romantic Outlaws. If you're interested in Mary Shelley, you might wanna pick this one up because this actually talks about her mother who was famous in her own right. Uh, this is about Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley. Uh, it's by Charlotte Gordon and I think this is well worth your time if you're interested in the women of this age and the beginning of feminist thinking because that's really what Mary Wollstonecraft is, is actually remembered for the most in this time. And with that, I hope I have added some new titles to your reading list to keep you occupied until the next season of Bridgerton is released. So until next time, happy reading, and we'll see you back again on To Read or Not To Read.